So after the Orlando Magic landed the number one overall pick in the 2022 NBA draft, a lot of the NBA and even Orlando Magic community is speculating who the Magic are going to take with the number one overall pick. But I think Magic fans in general finally have a reason for a lot of optimism, not only with the number one overall pick, but with the young core and the bright future that the Orlando Magic have. And I'm here to talk about today why the Orlando Magic have such a bright future. Now, before I actually get into today's video, if you guys are new here, consider hitting that subscribe bell to stay tuned for more NBA and Jacksonville Jaguars content that I do here on YouTube and if you guys could drop me a like it takes one second and it helps me on the channel out tremendously also make sure you guys go follow me on both Twitter and on Instagram the links will be in the description down below I'm very active on there now let's get into the magic now when it comes to the Orlando Magic the Orlando Magic have not had a great or a really optimistic young core to look forward to since the departure of Magic Legend and future Hall of Famer Dwight Howard. The Magic have had young core and pieces with guys like Victor Oladipo, Tobias Harris, Nikola Vucevic, Evan Fournier, Aaron Gordon, Mario Hazonia, the list goes on. But not only did not a lot of these guys pan out, the Magic failed a lot of these guys from coaching changes and culture standpoints. The Magic really never found a way to get it together, except for their one lone playoff appearance in the 2019 NBA playoffs, which I attended game three. Loved that series was happy for the Magic. But let's actually get an overview at the Magic's roster as it's currently constructed with head coach going into his second year, Jamal Mosley. And where the Magic stand right now because this is a significantly different young core that actually has a lot of blue chip talent on this roster moving forward. And there's a lot more reason for optimism with this young core. So I'm gonna go down the list from one through five and go with guys like Cole Anthony, Markel Fultz, Jalen Suggs, RJ Hampton, Gary Harris, Terrence Ross, Franz Wagner, Braz Dinkus, Chuma Okiki, Jonathan Isaac, Mo Wagner, Wendell Carter Jr., Mo Bamba, and Robin Lopez. Now, while the Magic did struggle significantly in 2021, you can't really blame them because this is such a young team alongside probably another really young team in the Oklahoma City Thunder. The Magic were horrible last season. They had some injuries, but also this is just still a very young team who had a first-year head coach in Jamal Mosley last season. The Magic not only finished 15th in the Eastern Conference in terms of seeding, the Magic were 28th in three-point percentage at 33.1%. They ranked number 29 in the NBA last season in points per game, 104.2%. They were number 13 in rebounds per game because they do have some size for their young core and a lot of length with 52.6 rebounds per game, but they ranked dead last in the association in offensive efficiency last year. Not good. Now, while I could just point out one or two notable blue chip talents that the Magic have in their roster, it's everywhere you look and the potential that this Magic team has. But before I actually get into that, let me say this first and foremost. This is going to be the evaluation year for not only Jamal Mosley and Jeff, but for this entire Magic team moving forward. When you look at guys, especially in the backcourt, like Cole Anthony, Jalen Suggs, Markel Fultz, RJ Hampton, this is going to be the evaluation. This is going to be the make it or break it year. Hey, are we going to choose to keep you on this roster and move forward building around you? Or are you going to be the lone one out, maybe the lone two out, and we're going to have to move on from you? That's what this season is going to be all about between that backcourt. When you look at a guy like Cole Anthony, who was probably the best Magic player last season, maybe alongside Franz Wagner and Wendell Carter Jr., Cole Anthony last season was 16 points per game, five assists, five rebounds. It was 34% from three. Needs to raise that a bit, but he was probably the Magic's most consistent player most nights, I would have said. Then you look at a guy like Markel Fultz, who returned back off his ACL injury on February 28th, 2022, versus the Indiana Pacers, my birthday. So that was the best birthday gift I could have possibly gotten for my 21st birthday. Markel Fultz in just, I believe, 22 games he played at the end of the season, 10.8 points per game, five and a half assists, and he shot incredibly well coming off that ACL injury, 48% from the field. You look at a guy like Jalen Suggs, who was our number five overall pick last season, struggled significantly in his rookie season in only 48 games. Jalen Suggs, 11.8 points per game, 4.4 assists, 3.6 rebounds, and he shot a horrible 21% from three, but I'm gonna give him his rookie struggles I think he's going to significantly improve and he's going to be a great player for this franchise moving forward. But with our number eight overall pick last season with a guy like Franz Wagner, 15.2 points per game, 4.5 rebounds, 3.3 assists, and 35% from deep. Franz Wagner, first team, all NBA rookie. Great job by him. Then you look at a guy like J.I. who's really not proven much since coming into the league back in 2017. He's only appeared in 136 career games 
which is not good considering the fact that you know he's been dealing with an immense amount of injury since coming into the league from shoulder injuries i haven't seen him play since the bubble ji is going to be a premier elite two-way defender in this game who can switch one through five because the best ability is availability i'm hoping ji comes back strong healthy and determined and hopefully he can stay healthy but that remains to be seen. Then the Orlando Magic obviously gave out a contract last season with Jonathan Isaac as well too, or excuse me, two seasons ago, I guess now, where he signed a four-year $69 million deal. Nice. And then you look at Wendell Carter Jr., who the Magic acquired from that Chicago Bulls trade with Nikola Vucevic, who's proven to be a valuable commodity and probably one of the most underrated players in the entire association. Wendell Carter last season, 15 points per game, 10 and a half rebounds, three assists, and he shot a decent slash respectable 33% from deep for a big man. I'll take that for Wendell Carter Jr. Mo Bamba's been the big talk for the Magic this offseason. What are the Magic going to do with him? Because when you look at a guy like Mo Bamba, who did improve this past season, he started in 69 games. Nice. He averaged 10.6 points per game, 8.1 rebounds, 1.7 blocks, and 38.1% from deep, which I believe was a career high for him. One of the best three-point shooters on the Magic last season. Mo Bamba, if the Magic want to extend an offer to him, $10.1 million, that's what the Magic are going to need to do for a qualifying offer in order to keep him because he is a restricted free agent. Realistically, I see the Magic in a sign and trade with him. The Magic not only have the number one overall pick, we have two second round picks, I believe, as well. Then you look ahead to 2023, the Magic have a top four protected pick from the Chicago Bulls that we still acquired in that Chicago Bulls trade. Then 2025, we still have the Denver Nuggets first round pick that we acquired from the Aaron Gordon trade. You look everywhere, there is a notable amount of blue chip talent on this Orlando Magic roster. And as I said earlier, and I'm gonna say it again, this is the evaluation year, especially in the backcourt. What are the Magic gonna do with Cole Anthony, Jalen Suggs, Markel Fultz, and RJ Hampton in the backcourt? I realistically see two of these guys staying, and I see two of them being moved on after this season because this is gonna be the evaluation year. Can we build around you for the future of this team moving forward? These guys are going to have to prove it one over the other. And then the Magic will obviously be adding to this with the number one overall pick, whether they want to go Paolo Banchero, they want to go Jabari Smith, or they want to go Chet Holmgren. Now, I will make a completely separate video for that and talk about who the Magic should take with the number one overall pick at a later date. That's why I'm just talking about the young core right now. You see the potential and you see the culture that the Magic are building right now. I think that they've done a great job. Jamal Mosley was proven to be a guy who I saw a lot of growth out of in his first year as the head coach. And now the back half of this video that I'm going to address right now is from my guy Dalton, UCF Jaguar. I know you requested this, so this is for you, man. For all my Jaguar fans out there that are also Magic fans, let me break this down for y'all that aren't maybe Magic fans, maybe not even the biggest NBA fans. Let me make a little bit of a comparison as to where the Orlando Magic are right now with this young core. And then you look at the Jacksonville Jaguars and they're a little bit of past. So I'm going to compare the Jags of the past to this Orlando Magic young core. When you look at the Jaguars 2014 and 2016 notable draft classes where the Jaguars had a lot of blue chip talent. When you look in 2014 with Brandon Linder, Blake Bortles, Marquise Lee, Allen Robinson, you saw a lot of potential on the offensive side of the ball. Then you go to 2016 on the defensive side of the ball. You look at guys like Yannick Ngakwe, Jalen Ramsey, Miles Jack, the list goes on. A lot of blue chip talent that helped the Jaguars in 2017 get to the AFC Championship game where they finished with a 10 and 6 record and they were one game short of the Super Bowl. That was the year that they all put it together. Doug Marone got this team over the top. And even though you saw the 2016 to 2014 draft class with guys like Gus Bradley in the building as the head coach, you saw the infusion of talent that the Jacksonville Jaguars had. You saw spurts of it in 2015 where Blake Bortles, I believe, set the franchise record. Four most passing touchdowns, 35 in a single season. There was just so much potential with this young core and this team, and you saw it all over the field. You were just waiting for the right coach and for everybody to be healthy in order to take that next step. And that's exactly where this Magic team is right now with all of their young core and pieces. This isn't the Magic team of the past. This is the team that actually has a young core of great draft selections over these last couple of years that have added up to now. Now it's waiting. Where can we actually take that next step? And when is it going to actually all come together where everyone's healthy? You see the blue chip talent. You have the number one overall pick this year. And while there isn't a number one pick slam dunk like the Jaguars had in 2021 with Trevor Lawrence, who was the consensus, is it going to be Trayvon Walker? Is it going to be Aiden Hutchinson? Will it be Evan Neal, Ikki Aquanu? 
where will the Jaguars go? Obviously, it ended up being Trayvon Walker, the athletic specimen. But then with the Orlando Magic, it's like, okay, who are they going to take with the number one overall pick? The NBA and the Magic community is unaware of who the Magic are going to take because there's not a slam dunk consensus number one overall pick from Jabari Smith, Chet Holmgren, and Paolo Banchero, who all have very high ceilings. I think probably Chet has the highest ceiling, but he also has the lowest floor out of these group of guys. Right now, I'm leaning Jabari Smith, but like I said, topic for another day. There's a huge infusion of where the Magic could possibly go with the number one overall pick. And the core right now is stacked in terms of young core and developmental blue chip talent pieces. But NBA fans, Magic fans, I want to hear your guys' thoughts in the comments down below. I believe that the Orlando Magic have an insanely bright future, regardless of the bias of me being a Magic fan. I want to hear your thoughts in the comments down below. And like I said, if you guys are new here, consider hitting that subscribe bell to stay tuned for more NBA and Jacksonville Jaguars content that I do here on YouTube. And if you haven't already, make sure you guys drop me that like. It takes one second and helps me on the channel out tremendously. Make sure y'all go follow me on my socials on Instagram and Twitter. Like I said, I'm active and I'm on there every single day. The links will be in the description down below. But that's it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Brett James, aka BJ. I'm out, y'all. Pure magic, baby. Peace.